Hello, my name is Lacey Sheldon and I'm a librarian at McIntosh Memorial Library in Viroqua. And today uh, there's a fellow librarian joining me as a co-host for the program. This is Maggie Stripmotter. Hi, Maggie. Hello. <laughs> Great. And today uh, the presentation is by Karen Dahl. Hi, Karen. Good morning. Good morning, Karen. Karen. Or as they say, Sawadika. 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 Mm -hmm. um, so in that, uh, the presentation today is Journeys in Thailand, Vernon County Residents Beyond Borders. So we're so happy to have Karen here today to speak with us about the journeys she has made from Vernon County to the other side of the world, to Southeast Asia, and about the work that she has done and is doing in Thailand specifically. But Karen's going to let us know all about that. So without further ado, round of applause for Karen Dahl. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much to Lacey and Maggie for inviting me. Mm -hmm. It's a, a wonderful opportunity. It's my opportunity for propaganda. <laughs> and get the word out. In 1996, I was notified that I had been nominated uh, to the Wisconsin Rural Leadership Program. I'd never heard of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a 14 page application and a panel of interviewers, I think there were 10 or 12 of them, and it was the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life, and particularly since I didn't even know what rural leadership was. But it take, each class is every two years with 30 participants and two alternates. And we learn, we discuss issues that impact rural as well as urban people and suburban and the commonality. And we look for common ground in mm -hmm. dealing with issues. And it's, it was pretty, pretty comprehensive two years. In 1998, we went for our two week international seminar and it was Thailand and Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And I'm a child of the Vietnam era. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, Vietnam called to me. I wanted to see it. I was surprised. I was hooked by Thailand, but that's another story. But um, we went to Thailand and our first impression was, I mean, it is a magnificent country and the airport is beyond anything you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gold and I mean, it's a brand new airport. It, it, yeah. It's beyond description. It's so fabulous. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were transferred to our first hotel and that was in Bangkok. And our first presentation was given by a professor from Thammasat University, mm -hmm. an economist. And he talked about the, the Thai tiger, the economic engine in mm -hmm. Thailand and Asia and how well they were doing. Mm -hmm. And um, you could see it. It was like I was driving in a, a separate time in a car and looking out the window and I'm thinking, this could be Miami Beach, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, or the interstates. It, 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 it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Everything, everywhere in China and Asia and every place is just an amazing economic growth. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. here we are. That was our first introduction to Thailand. Mm -hmm. And after the program, I went up to the presenter because I always do this. You never know when you're talking to an audience, if you're reaching them, are they asleep? Are they planning their, you know, what they're <laughs> having for dinner? Yeah. <laughs> so I went up to him and I said, oh, it was so interesting. And he is a television and radio star. Okay. In, uh -huh. in Thailand. And I said, well, if you know, I have a radio show. It's not quite as big an audience. It's not 60 million, but <laughs> um, people would like to hear about that. And I certainly would like to know what was going on. And if you needed an unofficial survey of some opinion, you know, give me, a, send me an email. Mm -hmm. And when I returned, I already had an email from, from the uh, chairman of the graduate study in, in economics. And, uh, through that contact, I became the unofficial hostess for all visiting scholars or professors from Thomas University to Wisconsin. Okay. 
and there's, I have so many stories about this. One time I've got a call or an email, Yara Veres Kopan is coming to Wisconsin to be a visiting scholar at UW-Madison. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, is Yada Mattis a man or a woman? I mean, you know, right. <laughs> if it's a man, it's a little different. If it's a woman, yeah. I can easily integrate it. So I wrote to Yada Mattis and welcomed Yada Mattis to the States and uh -huh. planned to meet her in Madison, took her out to a banquet that rural leadership was putting on. And it turns out Yada Mattis was a woman. Okay. And she had gotten her PhD in Minneapolis mm -hmm. with her husband, who also got his PhD up there, and their daughter. Their oldest daughter, Tida, was born in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. But she's an American citizen. Mm -hmm. So when T uh, when Yara Veras went back to Thailand, Tida came and stayed with me. And I always say that she was the student or the guest that came to dinner and left 12 years later. <laughs> I had her for 12 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but she worked at Toledo in La Crosse. Mm -hmm. She got her master's at UW lacrosse in mm -hmm. special special education mm -hmm. she taught in, in wausau for two or three years mm -hmm. and then went back to school and got her phd in madison in okay. special ed yeah so you know all of these chance meetings extend to lifelong changes in some isn't cases. that incredible <laughs> so, i just love hearing that yeah oh, it's amazing and um the uh Second place that we went with the rural leadership group was to a place in the slums, Klong Poi. Hmm. And you've never seen slums like is that. This. A, is that outside I, of Bangkok, Karen? It's it's actually in Bangkok. It's right. down by the harbor mm -hmm. and uh, or the port of Thailand. Yeah. Uh, cardboard shacks. Um, how do I say this? There you uh, go. Corrugated metal, maybe one room. Mm -hmm toilet is when you put your butt over the water you know yeah. they do their dishes and the laundry and their yeah. everything and Maggie, it, it's uh, so unhealthy yeah here um karen maggie maggie has shared a map for us so we can okay. see the we can see the country of thailand and the star is where bangkok yeah. is and so people can reference um have an idea of where we're exactly what, what we're talking about here so thanks for sharing that, Maggie. Yeah. Great. Um, Klong Toy, like I said, is the largest slum in Th in Thailand, and it's similar to the mass migrations from the south in this country in our history. Is the poor people, the farmers, had to leave the countryside for various reasons, and they mm -hmm. all migrated to my to the cities, uh, Chiang mm -hmm. Mai, but predominantly Bangkok. Mm -hmm. And they left bad conditions and they arrived in worse conditions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, it's, it's a tragedy. The one yeah. nice thing about Thailand is um, they're primarily vegetarian mm -hmm. and there's vegetables everywhere. Mm -hmm. you know, it's irrel relatively cheap. But um, as you saw on that map, Thailand is kind of in the middle of Southeast Asia. We have Singapore, mm -hmm. Indonesia, yeah. Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um we have uh vietnam and mm -hmm. cambodia and laos yep. and burma or yep. myanmar yep and uh the even though they have borders it's very porous mm -hmm. so they've been great controlling covid until mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and instead of um it somehow it's just because of the borders and transit um it's just an epidemic Mm -hmm. beyond anything they can ca can handle yeah. but i wanted to tell you um thailand is a monarchy mm -hmm. and oh. the old king who yeah. just recently died within four or five years ago was revered like a god and he mm -hmm. the royalty are above us mm -hmm. <laughs> and um he died mm -hmm. and I, there was a certain segment of the population that was hoping that the eldest sister would inherit the throne or okay. parliament would do something but the, mm -hmm. the oldest son inherited but he lives in england and germany he has his concubines and he has his many wives and he's kind of a playboy and he's also the richest man in the world he's everything that was the 
treasury of Thailand, he has now inherited taken over. He, yeah, he's he's the man. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a movement about democracy there. Young young students, Thomas at University plays a very big part in um, revolutions and suppression and stuff like that, but. Um, they're not allowed to talk in Thailand negatively about the royals. Mm -hmm. If anybody complains about him living in Germany and England and not in Thailand, mm -hmm. they can go, they can be picked up summarily mm -hmm. and put in jail for 10 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. right, so yeah, don't, I don't talk. I'm in my FaceTime, email mm -hmm. or instant messaging with anybody in Thailand, mm -hmm. Thai people or Americans that are working over there, mm -hmm. living there. Yeah. I never talk politics because it's too dangerous yep. for them. Yeah, that's interesting um, to uh, point out, Karen, because it's a real um, contemporary uh, courtesy and precaution. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's it's something mm -hmm. to be aware of. You know, I think that this program is really about shedding some light uh, mm -hmm. on um, other uh, current scenarios and situations mm -hmm. that are playing out in the world. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad that you mentioned the different concerns that have been happening um, throughout Thailand um, in more recent times, COVID, the changing over of um, mm -hmm. a monarchy. Um, it's all very, very relevant. So thanks it for sure mentioning is. those. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you a, a couple of differences, I think, in our time um, that are very obvious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when our rural leadership group mm -hmm. toured Thailand, we went to a forestry station up in mm -hmm. the Triangle area, mm -hmm. and we ended up in a Hmong village, but that, mm -hmm. that we, we could have been Karan, Karan, um, there are five or six different ethnic groups that are yes. in Thailand yeah. and particularly in the mountain area. Yeah. And um, we stayed in a foresty station and I was in the women's dorm and they had the men's dorm. Mm -hmm. And you know, I walked around and made sure where the shower is and where the toilet is and found mm -hmm. my bed. Yeah. And one of the gals in the group said, ooh, I have mouse droppings on my bed. <laughs> we'll change beds, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Move so in the morning, mm -hmm. oh yeah, it, okay. In the morning, I was standing by the forest ranger um, and he asked me, how was your evening? How did you sleep well? Oh yes, it was great. But you know, before I went to bed, I walked around inside the cabin and I saw strips of wood. It was probably four to six inches wide and maybe an inch, or excuse me, a foot long. And I said, mm -hmm. why are those pieces missing from the flooring uh -huh. against the wall? And he said, oh, that's nothing to worry about. <laughs> that lets the snakes in at night to eat the rats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm glad I didn't ask the night before. <laughs> yeah, because you wouldn't have slept as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> there are snakes in Thailand and that's one of my mm -hmm. phobias. So when I go out into the jungles or rural areas, I always have a cane and I bang the ground and I yeah. let them know I'm coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can <Got> run. <laughs> I'm more afraid of them than they are of me, but that's okay. <laughs> oh my but goodness. The, the other thing is, is one time I was in the uh, foundation, my mothership, I call it, the Duan mm -hmm. Pratip Foundation in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the first time I was with two professors from the university and my very best girlfriend from college. Mm, love and it. Um, that was just a few years ago, you understand. <laughs> but uh, the one woman in the international office, she said, now tell your friends, don't eat the red food. Mm, I don't need to be told twice. So, mm -hmm. so I said to my mm. friends, they said, don't eat the red food. And my girlfriend, Jackie was, uh, from Texas. And she said, Oh, I've been eating Tex-Mex food, you know, all my life. I can handle hot. Okay. Said, okay. I'm just okay. sharing what they said. Yeah. yeah. So we got food. She was the only one of us that got the red food. Mm -hmm. We sat down and three of us watched her and she took a bite 
she turned bright red and she stopped breathing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the moral Literally. of the story is don't eat the red food. I totally. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I can say you know, I've anything had anything you buy here is so much more mild than mm -hmm. you find over there. Yeah. It's you don't uh if you're over there, don't play around. Don't that's eat right. the red food if you're told not to eat it because quite literally you can that's go blind real for a short amount of time from eating it. <laughs> and the other thing is I think I'm a world specialist on toilets. Oh, toilets yeah. and toilet paper. Yeah. The toilet <laughs> and talk. I'll share my toilets. Oh, two of them. Um Toilets in Thailand are very similar. Well, there's similarities and differences between China and Vietnam and mm -hmm. even Switzerland. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they have, it looks like a raised seat, mm -hmm. but you don't sit on it. It's kind of rectangular and it's filled with water mm -hmm. and you do your business mm -hmm. and um, you have to take toilet paper with you. <laughs> I always tell everybody, pack some rolls of toilet paper before you leave home, take the hard mm -hmm. cardboard out and mm -hmm. squash them down because mm -hmm. you need to take them everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, the toilet paper, and you put it in a waste paper basket beside the toilet. Mm -hmm. And then you reach and you have a pot and mm -hmm. you dunk fresh water into the this toilet apparatus mm -hmm. and it eventually float yeah. down yep. <laughs> that's an experience so you have to have yep. good strong legs yes <laughs> or you develop <laughs> them <laughs> exactly well <laughs> one time it the rule of thumb in bangkok is you never get in a car or a bus or whatever mm -hmm. or a taxi without mm -hmm. going to the bathroom first doesn't mm -hmm. matter yeah it, it, you would think that a 10 mile ride in bangkok mm -hmm. would be you know 10 or 15 minutes it yeah. could be two or three hours absolutely traffic is horrible yeah even with the new skyways that they built mm -hmm. it's unbelievable but mm -hmm. still bad a lot so of um, motorbikes oh go ahead sorry yeah and the tuk-tuks but yep. anyway we i was in the foundation we're all ladies room and everything and you know i'm used to using the thing mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh I was standing there with my slacks down to my knees in this enormous cockroach cape <laughs> walking True. by my left foot. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not so that I scream. Mm -hmm. I saw it walking by my foot and I'm going, huh, huh. <laughs> yeah, I walked under the door yeah. and saw everybody in the bath in the washroom mm -hmm. and it turned around and it retraced its step but it came a little closer to my foot. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I go, oh, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just touching my left foot. So I ran out of the toilet stall. Mm -hmm. And one of the Thai ladies says, oh, Kun Karen, Kun Karen, are you all right? Like I said, I dashed out of the <laughs> stall. <laughs> I got a little excited about that. <laughs> talking about that cockroach really yeah <laughs> anyway rushed out and the thai lady looked in I said, ah, ah, look and she looked in she saw the cockroach and she said oh <laughs> you know, yeah. like oh yeah i'm used to that stuff right ah. yeah <laughs> i thought you throw a saddle on it and you could ride it yeah right <laughs> it's so surprising just in general you know, the things that we may see commonplace here in Wisconsin and think, oh, this is a, a typical size or an average size. And so we normalize that size. Yep. But then if you're in another place, especially a tropical place like Thailand, um, Big bugs. <laughs> yes, everything's bigger in a lot of ways as mm -hmm. far as um, even the fruit that I've seen or um just the leaves on our flower petals you know everything mm -hmm. is just enlarged and it's yeah. very vibrant and life just hums and ticks mm -hmm. and and works yeah. over there it's uh, really beautiful i'll tell you one other thing that uh beds are different wherever you go too but in thailand for centuries they have slept on the floor mm -hmm. with a mat mm -hmm. so um i worked with three orphanages over there mm -hmm. and we stayed in one orphanage 
um, and uh, Pat and Joe Heim from La Crosse and Bob Wilson from Minneapolis, my sister from Massachusetts. And mm -hmm. um, we were all there. And Jackie and I got to bed, my sister and I. Yeah. Oh boy, everybody else had mats. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> climbed into bed and all it was was the floor elevated. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that's as hard it. as a rock yeah that's it <laughs> and, um and then they don't have hot water mm -hmm. so what you do is you, when you're taking a shower because the water cisterns are up in the building so they're mm -hmm. all hot mm -hmm. yeah so you know, sunlight about that and Solar it's so heat. humid there you have to have a shower two or three times a day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah yep. <laughs> so um the there is a pecking order in Thailand. I thought it was, this country is more egalitarian than it any almost any place in Asia, Europe is different, but they have a pecking order. And of course it's the king is at the top mm -hmm. and then the royal family. Mm -hmm. And then the next layer are, and I, I, I'm gonna say the three of them and I haven't quite de decided which one is, higher in this hierarchy, but there's the military. And remember the junta took over the government mm -hmm. and now they're uh, you know, welcoming this new mm -hmm. king, but mm -hmm. the parliament, the democratic elected parliament is no more right now. So there's the military, there's the very rich people and they're incredibly rich there, some of them. Mm -hmm. And then there's the intelligentsia, they revere teachers, whether it's an elementary school teacher, high school, university professors, I mean, they are the cream of the crop. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny is because we don't, we do not mm -hmm. honor our teachers like they do, whether it's in China, mm -hmm. any place else, they know that teachers mm -hmm. are our future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Interesting. You treat mm -hmm. them not only with respect, they mm -hmm. actually get paid. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly not anything on our scale, but they are really rever revered. Mm. Um, mm. The, the modern cities, uh, Bangkok is the most modern of Thailand. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Singapore, and this is, you know, in that Southeast Asia thing, mm -hmm. Singapore is the most in incredible city state I have ever seen in my life. Yeah, it is modern, like you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. It's clean. Mm -hmm. They have dormitories for foreign workers. Mm -hmm. By the way, that is where the COVID is worst in 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 Singapore. Uh, uh, it's a banking capital of Asia. It is yeah. so rich; it's unbelief. Yeah, unbelievable. However, yeah. they have a military government. Uh, I'm I'm going to say dictatorship but it's very tightly controlled. Now, Singapore is so beautifully um, designed after World mm -hmm. War II. Singapore was uh, conquered by the Japanese. Thailand was occupied by the Japanese, but never conquered. And they like to make that distinction mm -hmm. in their history. Mm -hmm. But Singapore has, let's say, North, South, East, and West, mm -hmm. and is divided into quarters and mm -hmm. each area has their own hospitals, their clinics, their shopping areas, their food halls, and 97% of the people own their own apartments. Mm -hmm. um, this mm -hmm. very small percentage, less than 3% that own land and have mm -hmm. a house. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's not- Yeah, isn't that amazing? Way. Yeah, that's incredible. And, and then public transit. So the train comes every three minutes. So during rush hour, if you get to the platform and you look in the train car and it's full, you don't get on because mm -hmm. they don't stand and hold. They, it's just so, um, this it's flawless. Yeah. But because of this, I think people might remember that uh, Americans sneaking drugs in there. It's against mm -hmm. the law and mm -hmm. they get beaten mm -hmm. or worse, incarcerated. Penalized. Mm -hmm. um, but I add, and no spitting on the streets, no graffiti, no drugs. Um, mm -hmm. You can't drive a car that is over 10 years old because it's, of the pollution and stuff. You know, so it sounds say, really clean. That sounds is, really clean. 
and it's incredible and um the architecture it's like um it's unbelievable anyway the food you know you have Chinese people there, you have the Malaysians, Indonesians, you may mm -hmm. even have Thai, you okay. have lots of Europeans and mm -hmm. Americans because like I said it's a big banking mm -hmm. um, place. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And you can Commerce. find be, yes and shopping and mm -hmm. like I said you can't drive downtown unless you have a special sticker on your car and you have to pay a lot more money because mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. traffic and the pollution mm -hmm. stuff. They're, mm -hmm. they're really, really well run, and they're yeah. very conscious of uh, mm -hmm. um, climate change and mm -hmm. the COVID, mm -hmm. and it's just perfect. Of course, they give up a little freedom. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I, I remember asking a taxi fellow. I said, "You know, how do you feel about this?" And he said, "Well, if you're not a criminal, you don't have to worry." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess that's makes sense sure yeah i mean that's pretty straightforward it's it seems like in singapore there has been so much urban planning and oh. civic engineering mm -hmm. and it's really from what i hear a very progressive very large very large in population city mm -hmm. that um yeah it's, it sounds really really fascinating to me i know it's really high on my to-go mm -hmm. list yeah it 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 <laughs> It's a little intimidating because everybody is so wealthy and uh, mm -hmm. Crazy Rich Asians was filmed in Singapore. I'm is sure that right? of that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, comparing that to other countries, you're gonna see the capital cities in most of Asia are really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, like with, a, what, Bangkok, I think. 15 minutes more or half an hour more? I'm um, we could we could talk for another 20 or 30 minutes here, okay. Karen. Um, we right. do have some photographs um, that Maggie had found and put together for us about the temples in Bangkok. Okay. So maybe we want to talk about that a bit. She's going to bring All it right. up here so we can see it. So 97% yeah, of Thailand is Buddhist. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's 96% is Buddhist. 2% mm -hmm. um, are Islam or Muslim. Mm -hmm. And then the, the last percentage is whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I did see, I went to the Bangkok Cathedral, which was Catholic mm -hmm. on an Easter morning one time I was there. And it was filled with every every shape and size of sect of christianity so it's uh -huh. not like that uh -huh. if you can't pass the secret handshake you can't come in but it's <laughs> right. ecumenical yeah <laughs> but um you're seeing there uh almost every temple that you see mm -hmm. in the southern part of thailand is of this kind of construction mm -hmm. and and this is real gold leaf mm -hmm. i mean their people may be poor and starving but boy their temples are really beautiful yeah um it's Buddhist mm -hmm. and um, some Buddhist monks are barefoot and they, you know, they go out every morning and they, they mm -hmm. beg for food yeah. and uh, to receive alms. Yes, the alms. And then yeah. there's one Buddhist, I think he's an American that converted to Buddhism and, and he mm -hmm. is in one temple and he gets as gifts to the temple exotic cars you know yeah okay when okay. when i was in thailand the last time it was uh, over the anniversary of my husband chuck doll's uh death he died on march 6 2016 and i was in north of phuket and pangna mm -hmm. which is the area that was decimated by the tsunami in 2020 mm -hmm. uh 2000 early 2000s <laughs> anyway excuse yeah. me anyway they had arranged for a buddhist ceremony in memory of chuck is that right now oh. what you do is they had and these are the people that i work with in the foundation they mm -hmm. had a uh, what is it 10 by 12 or 12, 10 by 14 photograph of chuck framed mm -hmm. on the altar mm -hmm. and then they had um water water mm -hmm. is cleansing it's a source of life mm -hmm. and it was pure water in the in the monk now before we went to the ceremony 
um, Monchai, who was in Viroqua for three months going to TC, and he was the assistant director of the pharmacy, excuse me, the orphanage that I work with in Southwest Thailand. But yeah. anyway, Monchai and I went shopping for these alms for the Buddhist monk, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he was the highest monk in that area. Okay. <laughs> and we got toilet paper, laundry detergent, wow. uh, toothpaste, and all sorts of stuff. And I'm yeah. thinking I'm going to buy him vegetables and stuff, but you know, uh -huh. they need other things as well. Mm -hmm. So we had big mm -hmm. baskets full of, you know, daily needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an amazing ceremony to remember yeah. Chuck. Yeah. And, oh. and there's pure mm -hmm. Buddhist, Thai Buddhism, but also the Chinese uh, Buddhists, Mm -hmm. And they have incredible ceremonies. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to with the, our kids and I say, you're traveling, the mm -hmm. most important thing you can do is go to something, a rite of passage. Yes. Whether it's a baptism, yeah. wedding, yeah. you know, uh, rehearsal dinners, weddings, sure. funerals. Yes. You know, all of those will give you a great um, slice mm -hmm. of that life. Yeah, absolutely, and, uh, Karen. I, I think, you know, it's a, from my own opinion, you know, a privilege to be able to travel and what a wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. opportunity it is to mm -hmm. be invited to mm -hmm. participate with people mm -hmm. in these um, life events and the ceremonies mm -hmm. of them that mm -hmm. are so incredibly important, as you mm -hmm. said, like a rites of passage. Mm -hmm. That really resonates yeah. with me a lot mm -hmm. to be able to participate mm -hmm. and be involved actively mm -hmm. in when we're in another place and, and absorbing right. a different culture and being welcomed into that. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for mentioning yeah. the ceremony for Chuck. Two... Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I went to two Buddhist funerals. Mm -hmm. And now it, it depends on how wealthy you are. It mm -hmm. could that funeral could go on for 30 days mm -hmm. or it could go on for a week mm -hmm. and the, the chinese funeral i attended was the uncle i can't remember who's anyway it was the <laughs> uncle of uh, somebody that i knew and was invited and um it was chinese and they had in they had drummers and mm -hmm. uh, all sorts mm -hmm. of bells and and then they mm -hmm. had dancers and mm -hmm. gorgeous costumes surrounding uh, mm -hmm. the the room, and mm -hmm. uh, I mm -hmm. turned to my girlfriend. I said, "They should take this to Radio City Music Hall or <laughs> Rockefeller Center, or hit the United yeah. States. You know, yeah. Chinese funerals. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was an extravaganza. Mm -hmm. And every day they had um, in the evening for the families that came, mm -hmm. uh, banquet practically." Mm -hmm. And then the, the Thai one that I went, attended mm -hmm. was the wife of the professor that was the first speaker for, yeah, uh, for right. Thomaset for the yes. rural program. And she mm -hmm. passed away. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister and uh, an American that lived over there. And uh, there were three of us that went. Mm -hmm. And uh, the family sits in chairs, mm -hmm. which is kind of normal. Mm -hmm. And at some point you go and the person who's passed mm -hmm. is laid out mm -hmm. like a table, but mm -hmm. it was knee high, not mm -hmm. waist high. Mm -hmm. And she was laid out and covered in a cloth of a yeah. white cloth. Mm -hmm. And her hand was handed sticking out, un, out from underneath that cloth. Mm -hmm. And people went down on their knees and then mm -hmm. they poured water over her hand, mm -hmm. you know, to, you know, that life giving that's mm -hmm. giving her life and, you know, the afterlife and mm -hmm. purification and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have two artificial knees. Okay. You know? Yeah. <laughs> if we put Karen down on our knees, we're going to need a crane. No, I guess. <laughs> so I, I explained to him, I'm not going down, honey. Yeah. <laughs> but, <All right. laughs> Anyway, it was okay for me to bend over and pour the water over to over the woman's hand. Yeah, yeah, as um, for Abel, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I went to a Thai wedding. Now, okay. this was the cousin of mm -hmm. the Thai student that lived with me for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> in that family. And that takes a week or so. Mm -hmm. And they get 
married in their tie ceremonies, mm -hmm. and then they'll have another one in a white gown and veil okay. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But they had um, women lined up on the road leading mm -hmm. to the house, and they had different things that people would need to bring like spatulas and a pot and pan and people would leave those with the ladies on the road you know really hmm. seated uh -huh. and then got to the house and it was in the family home all furniture is removed from the the main floor and everybody was on the mats uh -huh. <laughs> i even went down on a mat that time but yeah. they had buddhist monks and they chanted for their you know happiness and you know, right uh -huh. prosperity and stuff like that yeah yeah and yep. then um then afterwards we had a procession by the bride and groom oh and they were on a throne oh. on a stage and you would right. pass them and you'd get yeah. the money yeah you know, right and, uh, oh and then wow. go to the banquet yeah oh, wow hey, <laughs> yeah. hey that's incredible you've been able to participate in so many um rites of passage and yeah. that's incredible um, well, a know, huge part of their culture one of the things i've learned hmm. is you need to know you have to have a script to know what's you know the play mm -hmm. um right. so i've had experiences in russia that nobody told me what to do and i obviously did it wrong mm -hmm. but in thailand i said now what am i supposed to do now and mm -hmm. you, you know kind mm -hmm. of had a family guide and yeah. that was important yeah yeah but um because things can feel that uh, uh separate you know and that's what is so mm -hmm. special about this world that we live in is that everything is different you know oh. because that is what is just so amazing about humanity is that mm -hmm. we are all so vastly different in the way that we have our culture and socialization of that but yet we're all homo sapien we're all in this human form um and able to interact and connect beyond any of those um, language or cultural or any any type of differences so any difference yeah. I say that we're all children of God. Mm -hmm. We're all the same in mm -hmm. the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, Karen. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we mm -hmm. we touched on so we touched on those really big. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's religion, mm -hmm. uh, faith, rites of passages. Mm -hmm. um, how about the? Oh, here are some other um, images coming in here from Maggie mm -hmm. showing um, Golden Buddha. Um, inside of one of the temples. Mm -hmm. and these amazing. Are, yeah. This is the, in the center photo mm -hmm. is the Chopraya River. That's mm -hmm. kind of like the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. And um, is this the one that goes through Bangkok? Yes. Yeah. And it, goes, okay. and it is um, really dirty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like I said, you know, people, I never eat anything from a, a street vendor because they'll cook and then they'll go to the river and rinse it out and then come back and I'm thinking, oh. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it there's lots of restaurants and it's really very nice and picturesque and you can take mm -hmm. tour boats and stuff. Mm -hmm. They have long tail boats, but mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, the port of Bangkok is now clearing about five miles of the shoreline of the boat people and the in the slums because they're going to put up um big modern commercial buildings and Ooh. apartments and oh boy. a new port yeah. and it's, yeah. it's displacing okay. you know maybe eight hundred thousand people yeah wow and, and they're going to build high rises for these yeah. people wait this is so amazing to me um they're building these high rises to accommodate these people oh but but each apartment is going to be 200 square feet oh wow well, yeah. uh, <laughs> okay try to fit more than one person in there it's yeah like a, a big bathroom size but the yeah. other thing is, is huh. interesting they've tried to do that before okay. and because the people are tribal they're rural uh -huh. they retain their heritage they're better off having houses laid out where they can come to the village square they you know walk from house to house and visit with right. their neighbors or right they mm -hmm. help the sick or whatever 
So mm -hmm. the high rises never worked. And I don't know mm -hmm. why they're doing it again, but hmm. maybe it's 200 hmm. square meters, but it's, it's yeah. small. Yeah, kind of small, so huh? That's hmm. really a tragedy to see that, but uh, you know. Right. Um, yeah, creative solution for you know yeah. housing people to a higher mm -hmm. standard is, um, especially that significant amount of people is no yeah, small. Yeah, it's feat. a challenge. Yeah, no small feat. And then you have. Go ahead. Uh, next photo, please. Uh -huh. Oh. Okay. I'll end this, this conversation. <laughs> when I was reading the newspaper, the La Crosse Tribune, one day. Uh huh. I saw an article you know, like on the inside on world news or something. And I saw a story about an elephant. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. And the elephant's name was Motala. Mm -hmm. And what was significant about Motala was that she was from Burma or Myanmar. Mm -hmm. And in that area between Burma and Thailand, there's land mines. Mm -hmm. And you, Cambodia is still you know, Pocket. one of the landmine yeah. capitals of the world. Well, mm. Motala stepped on a landmine mm. and her mahout led her out of the jungle of Myanmar into Thailand to the only Asian elephant hospital mm. and led her to the hospital, mm -hmm. saved her life, the first her i guess it was her right or left front foot stepped on the mine okay and the bones were oh oh just, yeah really i could sad. just imagine yeah and the first surgery was 25 hours mm -hmm. you know to repair some bones and obviously some of the foot was missing so they had her in the hospital and then they built a prosthesis for motola wow yeah, and, and she can walk, elephant but she's not going to go far. And um, she's living, she's as happy as a pig in manure. That's what I can say. <laughs> and well, every time she, I wow. go to Lampang, yeah. which is right outside of Chiang Mai, the second largest city in, in Thailand, mm -hmm. I go to the elephant preserve okay. and the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I, it, um, uh, the hospital and the preserve have maternity wards. Oh, and, you know, with the so moms her, and the babies. Yeah. Oh. It's so cute. Yeah, and um, it, they call Thailand the land of the great smiles, mm -hmm. the land of smiles. And yeah. I always smile when I see the elephants. Yeah. But you know, there's a, oh. another story to this, a, a darker story, mm -hmm. is without the preserves, the elephant will become extinct. I mean, mm -hmm. not only are they hunted for their ivory, but their mm -hmm. habitat. Right. And for years, centuries, they've been used as working animals, clearing the forests mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, a lot of that work is done or it's done by yeah. machines now. Right. And um, what do we do with the elephants? Mm -hmm. And they eat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so they are put in these preserves. And when my sister and I were there, I just love this story. We were visiting the maternity ward and there was mama mm -hmm. and Jackie and I had bought some sugar cane to feed the elephants. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And there's mom in a tiny little baby hiding behind mom's legs. Huh. Mom turned around and she pushed the baby up to us. Go on, go on. You know, they've got food. <laughs> and, it was like, and the babies, oh. you know, came over and got the sugar cane. But yeah. It was, it was watching a stage mom. Yeah. You know, was your little one. It was <laughs> cute. And um, they have uh, wonderful artwork that the elephants do. But I wanted to say a couple hmm. of things in our last minute or two. Yeah. Um, after having been there in 1998, I mm -hmm. established um, a 501c3. It's called the Flame oh. of Hope Foundation. Yes. Our primary work is education mm -hmm. and help with the rural poor as well as the urban poor. Mm -hmm. um, I started was, I started it and then picked up Pat Hine from La Crosse. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a board of directors from Viroqua. Mm -hmm. Liz Franklin is on the board. Sarah <laughs> Meyer is on the board. OK. Karen Dahl is on the board. Um, uh -huh. Tyler, Frank Tyler O'Neill is on the board. Uh -huh. And then we have uh, Dick Record from La Crosse, Pat Heim. Mm -hmm. um, Leon Kwan, 
from San Francisco and <laughs> um, Kate Hatiridat from Singapore. <laughs> but I tell you, Tyler, when he was at UW Oshkosh, he asked if I could arrange for him to do kind of like an internship in Bangkok because he was interested in international development mm -hmm. and, he, and economics. And he went to the economics department to get a professor that would work with him. He was assigned a professor that graduated from Thomasat University. No kidding. Well, <laughs> and she had Kwan's parents as her professors when she was studying there. Oh, wow. My daughter. Oh, how interconnected. Is small here, huh? Right. How interconnected. And Fascinating. It is so completely. So Tyler went and did an internship in, I call it the mothership, mm -hmm. at the Duong Pratip Foundation mm -hmm. in Klong Toy. This, mm -hmm. And um, he worked there. And mm -hmm. uh, Sarah Mayer took mm -hmm. her two kids and they worked at, um, in the orphanage down on uh, the mm -hmm. tsunami orphanage. And I've mm -hmm. been back and forth. But yeah. uh, when Tyler came back, he finished his bachelor's at UW Oshkosh mm -hmm. and he went back mm -hmm. and he got his master's in international development at Chula Longcorn. Hey. Because <laughs> it, it, it was too difficult. But mm -hmm. that was where my Thai daughter got her bachelor's degree. Okay. There so, we go. Small world, huh? Yeah, it is. It's that's really fascinating though, how it's all connected. And then at the Flame of Hope, like I said, mm -hmm. headquartered in, in Viroqua for 21 years. Mm -hmm. And I told Pat when uh, she was vice president, I said, Pat, mm -hmm. um, you're going to be the next president. And she said, oh, I can't do this until I retire. Mm -hmm. She retired last October. Okay. So what does <laughs> that mean for you? Madam President. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to step down. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But yeah. I did leave a legacy of a one, mm -hmm. one legacy really mm -hmm. amazing is we had one of our, one of my friends from Thomasat University, mm -hmm. an American, which mm -hmm. we had included in our tour of the orphanages. He was so impressed. Um, he wow. said to Pratip, who is yeah. the woman who started this, he said, I'd like to meet you to uh, discuss making a donation. Mm -hmm. And we were at a party at the time, a dinner mm -hmm. party. And I said, why don't we wait until. So yes. I was driving with him up to Kanchanaburi, where we have a girls orphanage. And I said to him, Bob, you know, how much, you know, are you talking about a donation? Mm -hmm. And he said, it is, well, I'm thinking probably a million dollars. Yeah. Wow. And I'm thinking 10 or 15,000 maybe. Yeah, yeah, a million. Oh and of course, That's I a... said to him, Bob, will yeah. you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what a significant, generous donation. And that money can go so far, so In far. Thailand. Right? Yep. In Thailand, yeah. yeah. That's incredible. What a wonderful yeah. donor, like amazing donor. And, and really we have it great. invested. So we only use the interest. Mm -hmm. And we have nine students, full scholarships. It pays mm -hmm. for tuition, books, mm -hmm. fees. They mm -hmm. wear uniforms there. Mm -hmm. We pay for the uniforms, their housing, their food, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if they commute their transportation. Yeah. All of those yeah. for nine students right now. Yeah. That higher education is just so invaluable in some ways. Mm -hmm. Just incredible. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So Flame of Hope is really providing that. Um, yep. Yeah opportunity and the headquarters is lacrosse wisconsin now Yay. yeah okay <laughs> uh karen if um people who are watching from home are in, more are interested in mm -hmm. learning more about mm -hmm. that um is there a direction that they should that you could recommend that they head in whether it be a website mm -hmm. or okay okay um i can do a lot but i can't do everything uh -huh. so i did not develop a website for Flame of Hope that is interactive. Got it. Um, and that's being worked on right now. Okay. But there's, uh, I'm gonna say two or three ways. One is mm -hmm. you can email me. Mm -hmm. There we go. K-D-A-H-L at M-W-T dot net. And I can steer you. Mm -hmm. The second way is, um, 
www, I'm going to do this, um, D is in David, P is in Peter, F is in Frank, dot O R mm -hmm. dot T H. Okay. That's www dot D P F dot O R dot T H. Now that is the Dwang Pratip Foundation in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. It's been in effect, it's been in like 35, 40 years. Mm -hmm. We've been in 22 or 25 years, something like that. Um, and uh, they have it in several different languages. Great. You can That's pick great. it and click on the British flag, you know, mm -hmm. the Union Jack. There's no yep. US flag on that one. For English, and, um, yeah. You can see all sorts of newsletters and um, some write-ups and stuff like that. Great. And I'm going to close with one last story, small yeah. world. Please, Karen. My sister and I want to go to Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, that's the McDonald side of our family. Mm -hmm. And eat haggis and listen to the bagpipes and everything. And the Isle of Skye is where the Clan Donald's headquarters and genealogy and museum is located. And it's a big mansion type place and gardens and so i started doing bed and breakfasts and airbnbs and v, v uh, vacation rentals by owner that type of thing mm -hmm. and i found a place my sister's an artist and it was an art gallery gift shop with a bed and breakfast mm -hmm. and thought, this is great mm -hmm. so i contacted them and okay then we couldn't go and then we had covid and we can't go this year because she's not well Mm -hmm. but the people who had that bed and breakfast out of all of those in the Isle of Skye turned out to be the British connection to the foundation in Bangkok. No, oh, yes, 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 of course, of course they are. Oh my goodness, that just gave Amazing. me some uh, really great, happy feelings. It, that's just incredible. That's wonderful. Yeah, so. <laughs> Serendipity, like you said. Oh we're goodness. all six great what are it with six degrees of separation everybody that's, on the face of the earth that's it yeah. and i certainly feel very um happy to be connected with you and your story today and to be a fellow um, resident right here in vernon county or uh, vernon county right here in viroqua mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. fascinating to hear about the travels and journeys mm -hmm. that you have had in thailand in southeast asia mm -hmm. Thank you to, for coming today, Karen, and volunteering your time. Um, it's been a very captivating <laughs> and interesting uh, time to speak with you. Like I said, I'm the world's expert on toilets. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, when, and uh, bathtubs. I have to throw that in. <laughs> invite uh, me back, and I'll yeah. tell you all about uh, Bob Bullet Peterson from Crawford County and <laughs> my misadventures in Japan. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a special program for that in particular. That's well, so thank great. Thank you both for your invitation and have a great summer. You too. Sawadika. Kapunka, sawadika. Sawadika. Krupkunka.